Inside of Bitwig Studio 5.1, we have now a new oscillator called Byte. Exponential FM, hard sync, pulse width modulation and ring modulation from dual oscillator feedback. So it's already sounding pretty tasty. And in its purest form, the default state sounds like this. And the oscillator itself consists of two uh, oscillators. The first one here on top and the second one at the bottom. And we have also two knobs here, A and B, which are basically just volume or gain knobs. So we can bring in only oscillator one, which is at the moment tri triangle, or only oscillator B, which sounds like this. Or we can bring in a mixture of both, right? Or we can say we just want to ring modulate A and B together. Or bring in also B and A, right? And we also have here pulse width modulation knob, which when you turn it up, you modulate the pulse width of the first oscillator here with the second one. So uh, we take the output of the second oscillator here and use it as a uh, modulation source for the pulse width on, this, on the first oscillator. Uh, sounds like this. So when we change the outcome of the pulse width modulation, we can change here the second oscillator and see what, what happens. We can also, of course, use here a modulator in front in the front panel and then modulate here this kind of knob if we want to. So let's do this for a moment here, LFO, right? So you can also do it in this kind of way if you want to pulse with modulate differently than just using here the second oscillator. You can also attach, of course, a modulator and do it this way. Um, so um, the second oscillator here, is kind of the same thing. We have here multiple shapes we can choose from. It's the, the same shapes we have on the first one. But here we can kind of offset the pitch slightly. So when we input here basically D sharp and do here one semitone offset, we are on E. Oh, let's actually bring this in. So we can kind of offset the oscillator from the initial pitch or from the input key, right? Um, then we have this exponential FM button or knob here, which means you take the output of the first oscillator and use it to modulate the frequency of the second oscillator. <laughs> And this is exponential FM. It's not linear FM or phase uh, modulation like you used to from FM8 or DX7. It's like exponential, so it sounds different and it's, yeah, it gives you a lot of overtones and it's probably nice for percussion sounds and uh, to get some atonality into your sound. And of course it becomes interesting if you don't use the sound and use it for as a source for pulse width modulation. So let's bring this in. So uh, therefore this kind of oscillator is interesting because you have a lot of uh, modulation possibilities. You basically can just play one oscillator here with A. Then you can say you want to ring modulate with the second oscillator. You can also say you want to pulse width modulate the first oscillator with the second one. And then you can use on the second one exponential FM 
by modulating the second oscillator with the first oscillator. So it's back and forth, basically. So one oscillator influences the other oscillator, and then you can bring it together here with these two mix knobs and also, of course, with the ring modulation. So it's, you know, it gets interesting the more you um, play around with these uh, settings here. So you can bring in a bit of instability. You can also switch on the hard sync, which basically resets uh, the phase of this oscillator every time uh, the cycle of the first one is complete. I think this is how it works. Um, so every time the cycle is complete, it completely resets here the phase of the second one. So you have basically the same size of the cycle. So it helps you a bit with, uh, let's say, with the pitch control, right? So if you switch this off here, this oscillator 2 is completely free in terms of how long the cycle is, and then therefore you get a lot of atonality into the sound. So if, if we take here, let's say, a saw, or maybe let's take a pulse, right? And then we take here maybe plus one. You get easy, nice uh, Reese bass lines. Well, let's put this here onto mono and make this a bit shorter here. Maybe bring in a bit of glide. of course phase modulation amount here where you can bring in or change i think you can phase modulate the first oscillator with the second one um i'm not really sure if this actually is the case uh, let's see um depth of phase modulation from sub oscillator okay so i, I think this is oscillator b here i'm not really sure but i think that's the case So the name Byte fits basically. You get a lot of gritty overtones with this uh, nice oscillator. Um, it's probably also nice for pet sounds, not only for bass sounds, but I think the, yeah, the real benefit lies in making dirty overtones. And if you combine this with, um, let's say, a sweep here, Um, where you have basically two filters and also a distortion device and you can sweep here through the frequencies with both frequency sliders. Oh, let's bring here the Reese back. It's basically a heaven for bass lines for drum bass or dubstep just the byte here inside of polymer then uh, using sweep here to sweep through the frequencies just with one knob with two filters at the same time and uh, uh, distortion in between it's basically perfect for bass sounds okay um, 
So this is just Byte. I probably do another video on my Bitwig guide channel just about this one here. Um, but I want to give you a rough idea about this oscillator, how you can use it and how it works. And there are probably also uh, more videos on this in the future about specific sounds and sound design for pads maybe and for bass sounds. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.